But then Godzilla came along. The rest is history. Hey there, kaiju diehards. It's Heidi from Channeling Spirits. With the new short, Godzilla vs. Gigan Rex hinting a return to the Heisei era, we wanted to go back and explain its confusing timeline. Time travel! In this era, there are three members of the Godzilla species. The Heisei era largely stars the second Godzilla and his offspring, Godzilla Jr. But we know there was a previous one because in Godzilla vs. Destoroya, Yukari mentions... It was the exact site where the first Godzilla was killed about 40 years ago, right? We'll be starting with the second Godzilla, the Heisei Antihero. In 1991's Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, it's revealed that Godzilla was originally an undiscovered theropod called Godzilla-saurus. What's a godzilla -saur? It's the Godzilla family, but this species is not as aggressive. The original 1954 film described a similar dinosaur. It was known as the Jurassic Age. During this period, there was another species which we may call the intermediary animal, a cross between the land-living and the sea-living animals. Let us call this creature Godzilla. These Godzillasaurus inhabited several of the Marshall Islands in the South Pacific. You saw a living dinosaur on that island, huh? On the fictional Lagos Island, one Godzillasaur defended a troop of Japanese soldiers on February 6, 1944. It's the 6th of February, 1944. It was badly wounded by American forces and left to die. And this is where it gets confusing. In this era, there are three branching timelines, so we'll start with the first. On March 1, 1954, the U.S. tested its first hydrogen bomb, Castle Bravo, at Bikini Atoll. Operation Castle would continue its high-yield nuclear tests in the South Pacific through May 14, 1954. Those tests would mutate two Godzillasaurus one of them wounded 10 years before on Lagos Island. It is my belief that Godzilla was resurrected due to the repeated experiments of H-bombs. Both Godzillas likely had different temperaments. The Lagos Godzilla seemed almost to protect the Japanese soldiers, just as he would later defend the Earth. You'll fight for us once again. Our saviors come back to protect us. But then again, maybe not. I think maybe it wasn't really protecting us, but that it was only trying to protect its own territory. This Godzilla remained undiscovered for several decades while the other aggressively moved north towards Tokyo. Only a few months after Operation Castle, the first Godzilla revealed itself to the world. It was way back in the 50s. On August 13, 1954, at 7.05 p.m., South Seas shipping lost contact with one of their vessels, the Eco Maru. The passengers would become the first victims of Godzilla. He eventually makes landfall on Odo Island. He appears repeatedly before decimating the heart of Tokyo. While resting in Tokyo Bay, Dr. Sirizawa releases his ultimate weapon, the Oxygen Destroyer. Sarazawa discovered a way to destroy all oxygen and water, thereby disintegrating all living matter. Not wanting his invention to become the next nuclear bomb, Sarazawa sacrifices himself to destroy both Godzilla and the only person who could create another oxygen destroyer. No other dates are given throughout the film, but we do see a calendar with 31 days in the background, presumably for August. Later, the calendar hasn't changed, so the entire events of Godzilla 1954 may have taken place in the same month. Why August? It might be a reference to the atomic bombings of Nagasaki and Hiroshima, which both occurred in the August of 1946. 30 years would pass before the Lagos Godzilla would make his debut in 1984's The Return of Godzilla. When he first appeared 30 years ago, Godzilla was regarded with awe. 
Sometime in 1984, Daikoku Island erupted, which awoke the sleeping giant. Three months ago, there was a large volcanic eruption on Daikoku Island. It must have disturbed Godzilla and brought him to the surface. Three months later, a nearby fishing vessel encounters the Colossus. When nearly all of the crew are killed, this new Godzilla appears to be echoing his predecessor. But this culprit is actually a giant sea louse? At least it isn't a shrimp. After 30 years, Godzilla feeds on a nuclear reactor. Hungry for more, he emerges from Tokyo Bay to be greeted by Super X. What Super X? Uh, it was built in secret to defend the capital. Super X is the first in a series of super weapons the JSDF will use against Godzilla. Its cadmium missiles knock him out cold until a radioactive electrical storm reawakens him. Godzilla's rampage is short-lived and he is eventually lured into Mount Mihara. While one volcano awakened him, another will entrap him. Godzilla vs. Biolanti shows his cells are collected only a few hours after Godzilla's rampage in Tokyo. The cells end up with Dr. Shirigami until a bomb destroys them. Five years pass. Is it really five years? And Godzilla begins to stir in Mount Mahara. The JSDF released the new Super X-2. It's twice as durable as the titanium alloy armor on the old Super X. It's now submersible and has a fire mirror. It's also new. Which can reflect Godzilla's atomic breath back at him. Dr. Shirigami has also spliced Godzilla's cells with those of a rose, giving birth to Biolanti. And the Japanese government has created anti-nuclear energy bacteria, a bioweapon which feeds off nuclear energy, including Godzilla's. We don't get many dates in, but we do hear and demand that you turn over the anti-nuclear energy bacteria, not later than 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, Tuesday 31st. In 1989, only January and October had the 31st on a Tuesday. Given how people are dressed, it likely happens during a warm autumn. The combination of the Super X2, Biolanti, and the anti-nuclear energy bacteria put Godzilla in a comatose state in the Sea of Japan. In this timeline, Godzilla remained dormant, allowing Japan to prosper. It becomes an unrivaled global superpower by the 23rd century, even buying up other nations. We made up the story about Godzilla. He never does destroy Japan. I see. And what about the nuclear pollution that destroys Japan? It's all a lie. Later on, Japan will become even stronger, the richest nation of the 21st century. In 2204, a group of radical Futurians travel back into time to Japan July 1st, 1992. Miki Sagusa, a psychic who first encountered Godzilla in 1989, says that Godzilla is still weak after a thousand days. A thousand days from July 1st, 1992 would be early October 1989, giving further evidence that Godzilla vs. Biolanti happened in autumn of that year. The small image is a picture of Godzilla who was driven there by Biolanti. That is where he's been lying all this time. All of these years, he's been kept alive and enervated by anti-nuclear bacteria. The Futurians claim that removing the Godzilla sore from Lagos Island in 1944 will stop it from being irradiated by an H-bomb, thus preventing the creation of Godzilla. They travel back in time from July 6, 1992 to February 6, 1944. On February 14th, the dinosaur is transported into the Bering Sea. However, the Futurians surreptitiously leave three Dorats on the island before returning to the present. Where are the Dorats? M11, time warp. This creates a tangent timeline significantly different from their original. 
rather than the Godzilla Sor being exposed to the H bomb, the Dorats are. This fuses and mutates them into King Ghidorah. The Dorats? You mean that they were exposed to radiation from the H bomb test in 1954? But Godzilla's creation was inevitable. In 1977, a Russian nuclear submarine crashed into the dormant dinosaur, once again making the monster. We know even in the tangent timelines, the events of the return of Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Biolanti occur to some degree. In Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, they theorize the extraterrestrial terror's origin. There were only two occasions when G-cells were sent into outer space. One, a fragment of Biolante, and two, Godzilla's flesh attached to Mothra. It also mentions Goro Gondo was still killed by Godzilla in 89, which is why Akira Yuki has vowed to kill the kaiju. His best friend was killed just recently while fighting Godzilla. He swears he will get revenge for killing my brother. And in Godzilla vs. Destoroya, they introduced the Super X-3, the next iteration after the Super X and Super X-2. It's possible the anti-nuclear energy bacteria didn't have the same effect, which might explain why it's never mentioned again. But when the time travelers return to the tangent July 6th, 1992, Godzilla has disappeared. And now King Ghidorah has taken his place. Controlled by Futurians, King Ghidorah begins decimating Japan. Desperate to stop the Triple Crown King, the Japanese government sends a nuclear sub to the Bering Sea in hopes of remaking Godzilla. Already mutated, the Titan destroys the ship and absorbs its nuclear energy. It's got much bigger. Godzilla was made with modern nuclear weapons this time, so it's only natural that he's bigger than before. Besides that, it's more powerful because it's absorbed all of the sub's energy. Having grown 20 meters taller, the Goliath takes on Ghidorah. Severing his middle head, he leaves it for dead in the sea. Unimpeded, Godzilla goes on to destroy Japan, which no longer exists by 2204. It was destroyed by a monster. Emmy, a Futurian defector, travels forward in time to revive Ghidorah as a cyborg. Mecha King Ghidorah travels back in time to 1992, diverting the timeline once again. Time travel! The cyborg stops Godzilla and sacrifices itself in the process. After Emi returns to 2204, the Japanese government recovers the remains of Mecha King Ghidorah. They reverse engineer the 23rd century technology and begin building two super weapons, Garuda and Mecha Godzilla. The year is 1992 AD. In order to try to counter the threat posed to the planet's survival by Godzilla, Japan's Counter G Bureau recruited the most brilliant scientific brains in the world to build a fighting machine. Godzilla remains undisturbed until a meteor crashes on December 15, 1992. Much of Godzilla vs. Mothra takes place the following month in 1993. Last month, a very large meteorite fell to Earth. It landed in the Pacific Ocean. We later see the Yokohama Landmark Tower still under construction, which makes sense because it wouldn't be completed until July of that year. The meteorite reveals Mothra's egg and awakens her dark double, Batra. Godzilla and Batra's battle ends when they are both swallowed by a volcanic eruption at the Philippine Sea Plate. But as we saw when he was trapped in Mount Mahara, lava isn't deadly to Godzilla. He has now learned to navigate through it and emerges from Mount Fuji. He was buried under the Earth's crust in a huge sea of molten lava. He swam from the Pacific Ocean all the way up to Mount Fuji. That's impossible. Any molten lava is at least 1,500 degrees. Hot stuff. Yes, it is. The two Mega Moths combine forces to once again trap Godzilla in the sea. Batra sacrifices itself while Mothra takes to space. Goodbye! 
After two years of work, Garuda and Mechagodzilla are finally completed. The first date we see is May 25th, 1994, on Kazuma's transfer paperwork to G-Force. An egg is discovered on Adanoa Island, being guarded by Rodan, a mutated pterodon. Godzilla comes to claim the egg as well, and when it finally hatches, It's a godzilla -saur. We later learn that Adanoa Island is located in the Bering Strait, so the island may have been part of his territory when he was mutated in the Bering Sea. The Bering Sea. That's where he's heading. Of course he is. He's going to his nest. Shortly after Mechagodzilla's first battle, Kazuma receives a demotion to the parking lot. Starting as of June 29th, Officer Kazuma will be in charge of the parking lot? Sometime in July, Rodan hears his adoptive half-brother in danger. He rises like a phoenix to become Fire Rodan. When Super Mecha Godzilla crushes Godzilla's sacral brain, Fire Rodan sacrifices the last of its life to revive him. Now supercharged, Godzilla unleashes his red spiral heat ray, and baby Godzilla follows his father out to sea. One year later, Godzilla and his offspring have made a home on Bass Island. Baby Godzilla has grown into Little Godzilla. Little Godzilla? Yeah. I don't know what they feed him, but he's growing mighty big. As we mentioned before, both Biolanti's spores and Mothra went into space carrying G-cells. The cells merged with the crystalline alien organism and were sucked into a black hole which mutated it. The space monster has exactly the same G-cells. Therefore, we named it Space Godzilla. Its tusks are similar to Biolanti's second form, meaning her spores more than likely took the G-cells into space. A new mech has now been built to replace Mechagodzilla, Mogera. When Mogera fails to stop Space Godzilla, it must team up with Godzilla to crush the cosmic clone. With Space Godzilla defeated, Godzilla and Little Godzilla head towards Bass Island once again. But sometime prior to the events of Godzilla vs. Destoroya, their home is destroyed. Remember Bass Island. It disappeared in a matter of minutes due to the nuclear fission of pure uranium, generated by a gigantic underground eruption. That eruption must have influenced Godzilla. The eruption has supercharged Godzilla to the point that he is about to melt down. The first date we see is July 7th. We'll later see the year is 1996, but we also get context clues. And with this, you won the Nobel Prize for Physics back in 1995, I believe. Mickey later says, I've been working here years. Seven, in fact. In 1989, reinforcing that Godzilla vs. Biolanti happened that year. With Godzilla burning and Junior missing, a new threat emerges. The oxygen destroyer that killed the first Godzilla also mutated microscopic crustaceans from the Precambrian era. Construction on the Tokyo Bay Aqualine brought them to the surface. In the early hours of July 19th, we see them feed on fish and eventually grow massive. An oxygen destroyer. It can destroy everything. Its power is that awesome. Destroyer. When little Godzilla finally emerges, we see he's changed quite a bit. He's definitely no longer little. Godzilla Jr. is here. Japan uses Godzilla's offspring to lure him to Destoroya in hopes of preventing his meltdown. The micro-oxygen menace kills Junior, but is also destroyed in the fight. Nearing critical mass, the JSDF cool Godzilla as he finally dies. Just as it seems the world will finally be without Godzilla, Junior absorbs the excess radiation, finally mutating into the third one. Then, at the end of the 20th century, There's going to be a huge meteorite in 1999. Batra was going to stop its impact with the Earth, and likely did in the tangent timelines. With his death, 
Mothra promised to prevent its collision, hence why she left for outer space. While that may seem like the end, it isn't. And if we ever become helpless and desperate, the dinosaurs will come back to us. 2022's Godzilla vs. Gigan Rex recreates the last time we saw Godzilla Jr. in 1996. Mickey Sagusa narrates that it has been a quarter of a century since he disappeared. But with a new threat, Godzilla returns once again. So Godzilla does still exist. At only six minutes long, we don't get many details like where Godzilla has been or why this one is so willing to help humanity. Maybe he stepped in because he was raised by humans? He's just fond of me. Or, like his father, he was merely defending his territory. Regardless, a horde of Gigan Miles descend on Japan. Godzilla emerges and quickly disposes of several cyborgs, showing he has mastered his father's atomic pulse. With the foot soldiers failing, Gigan Rex makes his appearance. Overwhelmed, Godzilla begins to glow white hot, unleashing a never-before-seen white beam, possibly more powerful than his predecessor's red spiral ray. Taking the crimson cores of his drones, Gigan Rex locks beams with Godzilla, but is ultimately dethroned. And that's the end for now. Are you quite sure? If you liked this video and think we deserve it, I find this very hard to believe. This is all beyond my comprehension. Please subscribe. If you're in the position to help, please support us on Patreon. And of course, keep coming back for more spooktacular videos. I'm Heidi from Channeling Spirits, and thanks for watching. This literally makes no sense to me. Time travel! <laughs>